So hello everyone, um, my name is Jian Tang from School of Information. Uh, the title of my talk is uh, Look Man, No Hands, a Parameter-Free Topping Model. So this is a joint work with Min Zhang in Peking University and the Chao Mei in School of Information. So in this work, we design a topping model that doesn't need users to specify any parameters. <coughs> so we are now living in the year of big data. So a huge amount of data is generated in social media platforms like uh, Facebook and Twitter. So in Twitter, uh, more than 500 million tweets are generated each day. And a lot of like, books are also digitized. Uh, other, big data, uh, other big data sources like search engine logs. So with such a huge amount of big data, it becomes more and more difficult for users to discover the information they want. So we need tools to help them uh, organize, summarize th those big data. right? And topic models are those tools to help us uh, automatically uh, organize and summarize the data. So basically, uh, topic models can help us do three things. The first thing is that uh, discover the topics, or we can say things, across the documents in the document collection. Uh, like say, given a Twitter data set, I can tell you what topics are users talking about in Twitter. Right? And second one is we can annotate the documents um, with these things. We can tell you um, which topic each user is talking about. And third one is we can use these annotations to summarize on-stand on stand and search the whole uh, data collection. So Tom Models has a, wide, uh, has a lot of applications, uh, not only in computer science, but also in biomedical informatics, um, social and political science, finance, and also digital, digital humanities. So now I will show you an example of the result topic modeling. So this data set, so, so the, the result is coming from uh, computer science bibliography data set. So in this data set, we have uh, four topics, um, information retrieval, uh, web, machine learning, data mining. So for each, for each topic, we represent with some keywords. So in the, in the right figure, each data point is, uh, is a document, and each color represents one topic. So based on this result, actually, we can see that uh, like how, many, how many documents in this data set are talking about uh, data mining. So with this result, we can understand our, our, our data set better and, and for, other, for other tasks, right? So in order to apply topic models on, on their own data set, so users had to specify how many topics in this data set. So this actually is a really hard question for users. So actually, it's, it's, it's generally very hard to, to ask users to estimate the number of topics in the data set. Like, how many topics are there in Wikipedia, Twitter? How, how about the whole web? And what about the Shakespeare's books, right? So this, this, question, this question is really, is really hard for users. So we, we don't want to bring too much burden to users when they apply those machine learning models. So we want to minimize their user effort. So in this, in this work, we try to address this problem. We try to estimate the number of topics in the data collection. So uh, we, will, we will start uh, by introducing how humans sort books into categories. So suppose we, we, are, we are given a collection of books and, and we want to sort them into categories. What should we do? So generally, we, we will start with a few categories that we know pretty well. Like say, we, we, want, we know categories like, categories like um, computer science, mathematics. And then what we, we will do is that we will scan all the books in order. And every time a book, a new book comes, so generally there are two choices. The one choice is that you can find an existing category that can dis describe this new book very well. And then that's, that's good. And we just put this book into this category. So the other case is that we cannot find any, any existing category that can describe this new book. So in this case, we will create a new category. right? And we, are, we will name this new category based on, based on this new book. So this is, um, this is how humans sort the books into categories. So actually, um, what topic model does is quite similar to uh, humans sorting books into categories. So we wonder whether uh, topic models can work as smart as human beings. So based on this, in, uh, based on this intuition, we come up with our uh, non-parametric uh, probabilistic uh, Latin semantic analysis. So this model is, is built based on the based on the classical topic model, uh, probabilistic Latin semantic analysis model. So this PLS model, the assumption that um, 
Each, each document can take on multiple topics, but with different proportion. And our NPL, NPLS model is built on top of the PLSA model. And, and what we do is the same as, as uh, human beings sorting books, sorting books in the categories. So we can also start with a few topics, and some topics we know pretty well. And then we, also, we can also uh, scan the whole documents in order. So every time um, a new, a new doc document comes, so there are two choices. First, you, you, you try to fit each, so, so every time a new, book, a new document comes, you try to fit the document with existing topics, topics that they say that. Then there are two cases. The one case is that the existing topics can fit this document very well. Then in this case, we, we just put this document into one, into one of the topics. The another case is that um, existing topics cannot, cannot well, fit, well fit the current document. Then in this case, we will generate a new topic of theta. A uh, general new topic, which is set um, as an empirical word distribution of D of the document D. So, so if we if we go back to the human beings sorting books into categories, so so in so, so in this case, um, so let's um, so when we go back to hu human beings sorting books into categories, there's a ruler ruler in human beings' mind to measure how well uh, uh, the existing categories can dis describe uh, each new book. So here, in order to measure how well, each, how well the existing topics can, can fit each document. So we also need to introduce a ruler to measure. So here we, we're using the log right hood ratio test. And where well, the null model is uh, the, the current topic theta, and the alternative model is uh, the current topic theta plus one more topic, that's uh, the empirical word distribution of current doc document D. And with this distance, we can measure how well a document can be fitted by, by the current topics, right? And the problem becomes, uh, when do we generate a new topic? So we need to intru introduce a threshold. If this, log if this distance is larger than the threshold, then we will generate a new topic, and, which, and we, we are set it as an empirical word distribution of, this, of this, new, new doc this new document. And then we will embed this part into the into the EM iterative, iterative process of the classical PSA model. So basically, the, the, the whole process will be optimized by an EM algorithm. So in each step, uh, for each document D, we, 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 will, we first try to measure whether, how, how likely the current, um, the, cur the, the current document can be fitted by the existing topic theta. And if this distance is greater than the threshold then we will generate a new topic, which is set, set as theta d. Otherwise, we do the same thing as, as the classical, classical PLSA model. We try to calculate the probability of each word in the current document D uh, belonging to each topic. So this is, a, so this is a for each step. And for M step, we, we, we calculate the probability of each document belonging to each topic. And another thing we need to do is we calculate the probability of each word belonging to each to topic. So based on this process, it seems like uh, this process is quite heuristic. Uh, so you, ha you have a threshold, y epsilon. If this distance is greater than the threshold, then you, you generate a new topic. So we are wondering whether, whether this process is principal. Uh, is there any um, underlying objective function behind it? So we come, uh, come with a theoretical inter interpretation we, we, we found actually that the whole process of this NPLSO algorithm is maximizing the log likelihood of data uh, and penalized by the number of topics. And the parameter for the penalization is actually the threshold of epsilon. So this is actually quite interesting. And we also find that this objective function is also related to some model selection criteria, AIC. So which, which means that actually our NPLS algorithm can maximize the AIC model selection criteria. So we can see that in this NPL algorithm, we have a parameter epsilon. So our, our, our target goal is that we don't need users to specify any parameters because ask users to specify parameter epsilon is as hard as to ask users to specify the number of topics in the dataset, right? So, so we want to get rid of these parameters. 
the, the intuition that the idea is that we can start from a large epsilon and decay it gradually. So which means that we just allow uh, documents that are farthest away from existing topics to generate a new topic. Right. The question then becomes, so when do you uh, stop decaying epsilon? Or when do you stop generating new topics? So here we, we come up with two solutions. The one solution is that uh, we can learn based on the structure of data. So we can wait until the topics are distinguishable with each other. In, in this case, we, we, we get our parameter-free MPLC model. In this, in this case, we don't need a user to specify Ibsen anymore. The another case is that we can ask some, uh, some supervision from users. But remember that this uh, supervision has to be very weak. So we ask users to provide some example topic, which is as simple as a query keyword. In this case, we, based on this example topic, we, we wait until the models to find a topic that, that's similar to this example topic. Because this, this example topic actually uh, tells the model what's the granularity of the topic I want. Right? So this is, uh, we get the weekly supervised MPLS model. So we first talk about the parameter-free MPLS model. So we start from a with a large epsilon and then gradually decay it. So specifically, we, we adopt, adopt a farthest first heuristic. So in each iteration, we just allow the document that are farthest away from uh, existing topics to generate the new topic. So we calculate the, we, we, we find the document this star that had the largest log likelihood ratio. And based on that document, we generate a new topic. And the question becomes when to stop uh, decaying Ibsen or when to stop generating new topics. So we, we wait until the diversity among the topics is maximized, which means that we wait until the topics are distinguishable with each other. So here we define the diversity among the topics to be the average PLYS distance among the topics. So in this, uh, there's a figure in the, in, in the right corner. So this is an example we, we did on, on a synthesis data set. And the uh, axis is the number of topics, and the y-axis is the diversity among the topics. So we can say that in the beginning, with more number of topics generated, the diversity among, among the topics increased. And at some point, the diversity will achieve the, the maximum. And if you first increase the number of topics, and then the diversity will, will decrease. And the, the number of topics without the diversity achieves, mean, achieves maximum actually is uh, our ground truth. So which means that the diversity among the topics is actually a good indicator of the right number of topics. The intuition is that, so in the beginning, if you have only a few number of topics, all those topics are quite close to the background topic. And we, with more number of topics generated, uh, all those topics will go away from from a background topic. But you, if you have more and more number of topics, then a lot of topics are duplicated with each other. And then the, the average, the diversity among topics will, be, will, will decrease. Then we talk about another, another solution, which we, we, using, we, ask, we ask users to provide some supervisions to steal the topic modeling process. So we ask users to provide uh, supervision like an example topic, which is as simple as a keyword. So you can ask users, so in this data set, what kind of topics are you are expecting? So people, some, some users say, I want topics like computer science, mathematics. And some users say, this, is too, this, this, this kind of topic is too big. I want topics like finer, finer granular topics like machine learning or data mining. So we, st we still adopt the same um, uh, procedure at the parameter-free MPLC, but we use a different criteria to stop generating generate, generate new topics. So we monitor the minimal distance between the query topic and the existing topic theta. So we wait until this distance achieves the minimal, which means that um, the model has found a topic that quite close to the, the query topic specified by the users. Okay. So the, here is an example. Um, so x is the number of topics, and the y-axis is the minimal distance. So in the beginning, the closest topic uh, and the query user specifies is frequent pattern mining, which is a subtopic of data mining. So in the beginning, the closest topic is a black, black topic, is a paper system data network. So this is more likely a, a background topic of this data set. 
And then with more number of topics uh, generated, the closest topic becomes the blue one, web information, knowledge, language paper. This is more likely uh, a mixture of inf information, um, inf information, information and knowledge. And the, with, with more number of topics generated, then the, the, the closest topic comes to the red one, web mining and network neural users. This is a mixture of um, data mining and machine learning. And finally, the closest topic comes to patterns, mining, pattern output items. So, so this is actually exact the uh, frequent pattern mining topic. And we can see that when the model finds this, this topic, the, minimal, the distance achieves the minimal. So in that case, we will stop. And the, topics will, and the model will return topics um, with the same granularity as the frequent pattern mining. So we will show example, show, show some results. Um, the, the first, uh, we show some results on synthetic data set. So in the left figure, is the, we compare our MPLS model with uh, other state-of-the-art state um, topic model, PLCA and the LDA, we can see that uh, we, our model can, can get a comparable performance with, with those models. And the, our model is better than the, than the Bayes and non-parametric non model. So remember, our goal is not to design um, better topic models. Our goal is to try to uh, get the right number of topics. So as long as our, as long as our Mm, the performance of our model is comparable with those models, then, then it's fine. In the right figure, is a, it, we can show that um, the diversity metric is a good indicator of the right number of topics. So th um, this is a result on the real data set. Actually, we can see similar patterns on the, on, on the, on the synthetic data set. And this is a result. Uh, we, we apply the weekly supervised NPLC on the on the DBLP data set. So DBLP data set is a computer science bibliography data set. The queries user specified, in this case, data mining topic. And we can, we can monitor how the closest topic changes change with more number of topics generated. So in the beginning, the closest topic uh, to the user query data mining is the black one, which is also the background, background topic. And then the closest topic becomes to the blue one, which is web data search information, which is a mixture of um, web search and, and data, uh, data mining. And then the closed topic becomes to the red one, data query, database, crossing algorithm. So this is actually exact, exactly the data mining topic. And we can see that when the model finds the, the red topic, the distance also, also achieves a minimal. If you further allow the topic to be, uh, if you allow you will allow more topics to be generated. Actually, we can see that the closest topic becomes to the, the yellow one, which is pattern mining sensitive. This is a frequent pattern mining topic, which is a subtopic of, the data, of data mining. So we have to stop when this distance achieves the minimum. So this is a frequent pattern mining topic, which is the thing we showed before. So I want to summarize that. So, so in, this, in this work, we we designed three models. The first one is the NPLS model. So this model allows the topic, allow topics to be dynamically generated during the process. It, it can automatically adapt the number of topics to the data. And because in this model, we have a threshold control when to generate new topics. So we try to get rid of that parameter. So we come up with a parameter-free NPLS model. So we're using, we use the topic diversity as a stopping criteria. We stop generating new topics when, when the, when the Diversity among the topics achieves the maximum. And we also allow users to, to steal the topic modeling, modeling process by providing an example of topic, which is as simple as keyword. In this, in, this, in this case, the models will return topics with the granularity at the same, the same as the, uh, the granularity of topics specified by the users. So, so the, the, the target goal of this process, we try to minimize the user effort. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.